Hey yo, we bout to spoil the beans. Bunch of movies you never seen. From Titanic, Gone Girl, Infinity, Warren Tree. Got the homie Derek Post, I'm finna tell you where he's seen. The beginning and everything in between. Man, we finna spoil the beans, dawg. With Sam and the son, got the whole team, dawg. We get it poppin' from Memphis to AZ, dawg. Welcome to the audio version of AMC, dawg. We gon' spoil the beans, y'all. Uh. You suck dick, right? <laughs> What's up, guys? This is Derek Poston, and we're back. Another episode of Spoil the Beans. I got a guest here. Uh, his first time on the beans. Hello. It's my boy, Jason Smation. Hey, hey, beans. <coughs> um, <laughs> he's also the reincarnate body of Jimmy Wolpert, who was yeah. another friend of mine who died in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And he came back as Jason, <laughs> which is awesome. Now. Came back a better comic, which is cool. Oh, that's great. Uh, <laughs> you're not as nice, though. You know, so well, he, he gained things, he lost things. That's okay. At least I'm funnier. <laughs> yeah, you are funnier. Yeah, you're that. definitely funnier. Really you're definitely that. funnier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you write better jokes, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, dog, my boy Jason's here. Bro, me, we met, I want to say, six years ago or seven years Something ago? Something like that. No, I think it was like six. Six? How long have you been doing stand-up? Like late 2016. So that's six? Yeah, maybe like five years ago. So five years ago. Something like that, yeah. Because, yeah, it wouldn't have been 2016. So, yeah, definitely 2017, 2018. Mm -hmm. Wow, bro. So I've been knowing my nigga uh, a minute. We met in... Uh, Huntington Beach. Huntington Beach. The Rec Room. The Rec Room mm -hmm. at a comedy club slash... Arca arcade. Arcade amusement fun, park. For fun your family <laughs> fun center. <laughs> yeah. Bowling alley. Too much shit. Bro, it, it did have this one thing, though. It was like, it's not... It, it wasn't an escape room. But it was like a laser room. It was a laser maze. That shit was <laughs> that shit was really cool, actually. <laughs> it, was, it was yeah, it was all right. I, I, I like doing that because it felt like you were uh, breaking into a you know breaking into an yeah. art museum. It was like a like an entrapment. With Catherine Zeta Jones, remember that the butt scene? <laughs> That's all I know that movie. That's all I know the movie for. <laughs> she is, she like arches under lasers. Oh, bro! Everybody knows that shot. That's a and classic shot. That's a classic shot. They do it again in what comedy? They do it again and they make fun of it. I think a couple. They they took, damn it! Yeah, there's one I, I'm thinking of where they do the literal butt thing. Oh, they make fun of it and get smart. I know that with Steve Carell. He mm -hmm. literally does that shot where he like shows. Oh, his butt does off, he really? Yep, and he drops down. Nice. And he looks back. Because like, that's yeah. that shot, right? Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Damn, bro. Yeah, Sean Connery's in that movie. He is. <laughs> no one remembers that. <laughs> it's all just that ass. Are you a that's big it. movie guy, Jason? Kind of. Fairly. Bro, that's a, you know this is a movie, podcast about movies, right? Is it really? We thought we were gonna talk about serial killers. We can't. That's all I was hoping for. <laughs> no, did you bring your research? You bring like piles of yeah. paper. I was got a dot of red string connected <laughs> to boards. Look at this. <laughs> no, I, I I figured you were a movie dude, but what? Before we get into today's, because you don't even he, he, guys, he's does, he's never listened to an episode of Spoil the Beans. He does not know mm -hmm. what this podcast is about. Mm -hmm. He he knows nothing. So this actually makes me really happy. Cause it's like, bro, you're you're a very rare guest. Wow, really? That's never happened. Everyone's like listens. Everyone's listening or knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. You, he has no idea anything. what this is. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, you're a movie guy, so I do want to know, just so I can get a, just so that everybody in the B Mafia can get a barometer of kind of who you are, movie taste wise. What, what's your favorite? Like, what's your like top five? Top five, like, like no order. No order. Probably like her swingers. Rocky. Rocky, probably, Rocky one or Rocky one? one. Rocky one. Yeah. yeah. A, I mean, there's a lot to choose from. I know, no, the Rocky, <laughs> the first one. That one's great. Uh, Ocean's Eleven. Wow, I, I love the taste so far. You know, because Ocean's Eleven, I, you can just throw on, and I'll just start watching it at any point. Any too. point. It's, it's good. So from any cool. Point, it's, it's tight. So cool. It's perfectly written. Perfectly mm -hmm. casted. Yeah. It's great. And then, I yeah. love you. I love your top five so far, bro. Yeah. I all three of those movies have been done on this. No, other than Ocean's Eleven, we have not done that yet. You guys, what was your second one? Uh. Rocky and Swingers. Yeah, done both of these on this podcast. Wow, really? Right? Yeah. I love Swingers. Those are top movies, yeah. bro. And then the other two, maybe like Willy Wonka, because I have like just an emotional connection. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. What's your fifth? Un okay, bro, you're tough. a four for four right now. Uh-huh. Maybe maybe The Naked Gun. I'll probably throw that at number five. That's, I've never seen that, so I don't know. You've never seen Naked Gun? I've never seen Naked oh, Gun. So good. Who's in Naked Gun? It's, it's Leslie Nielsen, the guy from Airplane. Oh, I love show. him. Is yeah. it a comedy? It's a comedy, yeah. It's a parody. It, it was a TV show in the 80s, and it's just like complete goofball. It's like a live cartoon. Like airplane shit? Like airplane shit. Like classic yeah. shit? Exactly, yeah. And then Damn. they And they made a movie, The Naked Files, uh, uh, Naked Gun Files from Police Squad or some shit like that. 
and it's hilarious. It's just ridiculous. The Queen of England's in it. Not the real one, but like one of them. Bro, your top five is like pretty scattered. I like okay, it. Yeah. You got you got a wide range here going. Mm-hmm. Those, my are, guy. those are definitely like the movies either I've like watched a lot as a kid or just like come to love. Yeah. Yeah. And still hold up now. If you cut them on all five of those, if they're yeah. on now, you're fine with them. They're that. gonna be great. Oh yeah. I can watch any of those any time of day. Unbelievable. Love those movies. Okay. Well, damn, bro. I, I I uh, you know it's crazy. I thought it, it, maybe I'm just being judgmental of you too, because I thought you're f- just from all the times we've hung out. I thought your top five would have been like three French movies I've never heard of. <laughs> no, you know no. what I mean. I guess what I'm trying to say I is do you're come an off asshole. As a, yeah, <laughs> I appear. I I give asshole. Like I, like, <laughs> I, I, give, I give it. I give. I give, <laughs> I give pretentious. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I not all. But I did figure that one of. But bro, all your five. Because I've never seen The Naked Gun, but I already know I would love it. Because it's like, oh, oh I love that guy, and I love the airplane movies, and I love parody movies. Like, I mm-hmm. love scary movie and all that kind of... I love those kind of Oh, movies. then you would love Naked Gun. It's crazy you've never seen it. It's, I, I'm, it's, I've never even heard of it, my nigga. That's wild. You're blowing my fucking brain right now. That's that, I, that There's this awesome movie that I've never even fucking heard of, and I do a movie podcast. That's insane. <laughs> you've never seen it. Yeah, you have to watch it. Damn. Okay, I, I, I 100% will. Or uh, I'll have somebody, if you enjoy, if you enjoy this, if you enjoy what this podcast is, maybe you, you will come back and you can do Naked Gun for me. Where we'll I would, where we'll I would tell you the movie? Who knows? You don't know what the podcast is. Okay, you you want to yeah, do it? You, you, you want to do it? I don't want to sign on yet. I'm scared. <laughs> okay. You sure? We can, we can talk about like the WNBA or something. We can ease you into it. Wanna, no. You'd rather just do it? <laughs> yeah, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You sure you don't want to talk about WNBA? I have a lot of stats. I, I, have do, a, I don't know I, anything about that. I have a whole movie. other. <laughs> I know that girl's free now, I think. Yo, Brittany Griner is free. Yeah, she, she's, she's back. That actually did just happen. Yeah. Like she's free. Don't look at the notes. Okay. I'm, you don't. Hey, they're so the, big. They're the font, big. The font is so big. It's really big. <laughs> you and you know what sucks? Look at. Well, because normally we we would be in a room uh, like this. Uh huh. But since we've been having to film at the house lately, this is the. I, I have no it. other way to. I, have no, I can't put the notes like here. You know what I mean? It kind of it's kind of fucked me. Yeah. So I have to tell all the guests now. Like, hey, don't fucking look over okay. here. Okay. So hard. <laughs> <laughs> Movie starts a thousand years ago. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's the whole point. Okay, no. I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. Now, now, it could be, now it's narrowed it down to at least a movie that's in the last a thousand years. <laughs> now it's narrowed it down be, to that. That could be like two or three. <laughs> you just immediately guess it right. Like, wild. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. Uh, I am excited to tell you this movie. Before I tell you the movie, though, I got to tell you the situation. There's a situation. Okay. Okay. So, this movie on this podcast, uh, a lot of these listeners, the Bean Mafia, they're. they're and I love all of you. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, a lot of times, they will pay for me to do a movie. Wow. Yeah, really? they, yeah, they pay, and they pay, bro. They pay hundred bucks for these. Wow. Yeah, that's tight. Yeah, it's it, it, hey, they they are loyal loyal fan base, and I love them all to to the core. And uh, hopefully, they like you after this. I think they will. Mm-hmm. And uh, but my my point is like, so th- this is one of those episodes. Not all those episodes. Not all the episodes are that. This is one of those special episodes. This guy's name is Peter Johnson. Peter, this episode is for you, dog. You paid for this, and I'm thankful because you actually paid for a fucking dope movie. A lot of times niggas pay for some random movie that no one's ever heard of, and it's like, God damn it, why'd you do this to me? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> but a lot of times niggas pick like a top movie that I was already going to do anyway. This is a movie I was already going to do anyway because this is a fucking dope-ass movie. And it's amazing you've never seen this movie. Mm-hmm. Are you ready to hear this movie? Yeah. Let's fucking go, Jason. Okay. The movie starts a thousand years ago, you piece of shit. You already know that. (laughs) You fucking ruined it. (laughs) That was the twist. (laughs) It opens with a twist? That's crazy. That actually is kind of fire. That would be cool. That actually is kind of fire. (laughs) They should do that more. Yeah, to open with a twist? That would be fun. And then, like, because then the whole rest of the movie, you're like, wait, what, is, what else happens? And it's like, well, nothing. Right. Like, if the trailer's like, it seems like a kid's movie or something, then it opens like a horrible murder. Yeah. And it's like, oh, this is not for kids at all. That's and, a good thing. And the rest of the movie is just the case. Yeah. And they don't solve it. No, it's really unsettling. And there's no part two. Yeah. It's, it's, just, actually, it's just. It's actually a bad movie. It's bad. It's, well, it's, <laughs> it's not like, acting. It's a documentary. It's like yeah, a real, it's right. a real case. Somebody really died. But the twist is good. Uh, right on top. Yeah. How do you open with that? Yeah, it's fire. <laughs> movie starts. God damn it. <laughs> 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 Movie starts a thousand years ago. Mm-hmm. You hear, I mean, you see uh, words come across the screen. A clan of warriors formed a secret society of assassins. They silently carried out executions to restore order to a world in the brink of chaos. They called themselves the fraternity. Oh, cool. So a frat? It's a frat. They call themselves a frat. Are they Greek? Yeah, I think so. I think they're Sigma Pi. Sigma Sigma Sigma. Psi? sigma 
Sing the side pie, murder house. <laughs> murder. <laughs> Welcome to murder house. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you know? <laughs> Who have you killed? <laughs> Six weeks ago. All right. Okay. We see people in an office singing happy birthday to this big fat woman named Janice. Mm. All right. Okay. Like just in like a regular office job. There's always one. Uh huh. There's always a fat woman named Janice in every office. Always, pretty much. Yeah. And she's white too. You also, you know, what's funny. This woman's been like a fat lady in an office and a lot of other movies too. Oh, really? Yeah. She's kind of like a classic that she oh, just looks perfect for. That's per. That's awesome. So you hear the voice, narr- the narrator, like the voiceover of the movie. It, you hear, it's my anorexic boss's birthday, and we see our lead. James motherfucking McAvoy. Ooh, Jimmy Mac. Jimmy Mac, Jimmy motherfucking Mac. Professor X. Mm-hmm. And he hates his boss, Janice. And he's pretending to, like, you know, he, he's, he's, like, you know, singing happy birthday and he's smiling. And he goes, pretending to like Janice for five minutes is the hardest work I'll do all day today. And you see him go back to work and he's like, I'm an account manager. And we see someone fucking the shit out of this girl. Whoa. Fucking the shit out of him, out of this girl. Like, it's the, like they cut, the camera cuts to is like, it's at, like, in an apartment now, right? And this guy's just going to town on this bitch. It's Chris Pratt. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> good for it's him. A, it's a young, younger one, too. He's not in shape. He's like, he's in shape, but he's not cut. Not, uh, not, it's the end, of, clearly, at that part of Parks and Rec where he started, I think, where he started getting thin. Okay. Does that make sense? I think so, yeah. Like around that era, maybe. Okay, when he started cutting a little bit. I think when he started cutting a little bit. Okay. So we see him fucking shit at this girl, and you hear the narration. That's my best friend, Barry. And he's fucking my girlfriend on this I in the on the IKEA kitchen table we bought like two weeks ago. Oh, IKEA table. <laughs> they put that together. They built that. Yeah, that's and that's hard to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm finding it hard to care about anything these days. All I care about is why I don't care about fucking anything. My name is Wesley Gibson. My dad walked out on my mom when I was seven years old. Sometimes I wonder if he looked in my eyes, and if the, and then he had and then he had to think. Did I just father the most insignificant asshole of the 20th century? Mm. This guy's really hard on himself. <laughs> he's like, he's you. I mean, yeah. That's why I picked this. That's why this movie, dude, Peter picked this movie for you. <laughs> Peter's been stalking you for Peter a while. Johnson, this fake name. <laughs> <laughs> this fake ass name. <laughs> Sorry, Peter, but that's just. Yeah, it's crazy to be like, yo, I don't want them to know the name. <laughs> I, don't want them to know. I want them to tell this movie that I really like because I listen to this podcast, yeah. <laughs> but I don't want them to really know who I am. Uh, my name is Peter Johnson. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> Do this Jay Fackamoy movie, please. Yeah. So, uh, we see, right when he says that, we see this nigga pull up in a super cool ass like outfit limo outside, like a you know this really big skyscraper, mm-hmm. and he goes up the elevator and he's dressed in black. I don't know. You ever seen the movie The Departed? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he, this guy, the actor, is one of the henchmen from The Departed. Okay. Like, I, I don't know if you remember a scene where Jack Nichols, Nicholson is yelling at a guy, and he's like, this ain't reality TV. Mm-hmm. The dude, he's yelling at because he's like, when I tell you to dump a body in the mosh, mm-hmm. you put it in the mosh. <laughs> and the guy, he's like, starts laughing. Okay, yeah. It's that nigga. I know that's a specific scene, but it it's, I remember this I kind of remember that, yeah. All right? So you see him. He's dressed up super cool, and he goes up the elevator, and he goes up to like this top floor, and there's this black lady there. And she's all scared when she sees him. And he goes, relax. If your name had come up, you'd already be dead. And she's like, Whew. And he goes, we'd like to know who our competitor is and who they're getting their ammunition from. And the woman, she, and he hands her a bullet. And she looks at this dope-ass bullet that has, like, these cool spirals on it. And she's like, well, it's clean. And then, you know, she's like, so it's untraceable. And she goes, hmm, your competitor's smart. She goes, but, and the right thing, she says, but, bam, headshot. Brains blow out, right? He looks out the window, guns pointed like, you see all these men like across another building, guns all out, right? This nigga takes off running backwards down the hallway. He takes off back down the hallway. He gets it into the hallway. He puts his fucking foot, this shit's hard, bro. He puts his fucking foot on the elevator, right? Like, like braces himself. And then he like looks and he's like kind of trying to gauge it. And he's like, fuck. And he turns and he hits the button. The door's open. And then he gets on the back door and he's like, okay. And then shit starts going like this. Like, the hallway starts fucking zoning in, right? And then this nigga, on some Matrix shit almost, bro, he, whew, he takes off. And this nigga starts running. And he's, like, he's running, like, at an unreal rate. Like, he's flying, bro. And then he pulls his gun out. And then this nigga, bro, uh, this nigga, like, he, 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 he pulls his guns out. And he fucking jumps through the window. Like, across from the skyscraper. And he's going in slow motion, bro. And he's headshotting niggas as he's going across to this other building. Whoa. Okay? In, like midair? Midair. Damn. 
It's wild, bro. You're like, what the fuck? And on some, it's like it looks like some matrix shit. Too. Like mm-hmm. it looks real. Like oh my god. Like like oh, they made it look real. Like he did this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then he he's flying across, and he he shoots a bunch of other niggas, and he lands at the black. He lands through another window, and then you see a guy like looking down, and he comes up from behind him. Bam! Headshots that nigga. Nice. All right. Good for him. He's still, he's standing there. The dude, the last few headshots, like a phone call goes off in that dude's pocket. Mm, and he, he grabs the phone, he answers it, and he goes, no one leaves the fraternity cross. Wow. And then you hear the other dude on the other line go, I have a new perspective. And he goes, careful, cross. You know I have to stop this. And he goes, really? He goes, you know. Face me yourself. Never send a sheep to kill a wolf. And he goes, I didn't. Goodbye, Mr. X. And the phone hangs up, and he looks down, and he's standing on an X. And he's like, like, you see him, like, and then right then in slow motion, bro, you see something start pushing his motherfucking, like, forehead forward. And then, like, it's all slow motion, though. So he's like, bullet comes out, and then Ooh. it stops midair. Bro, and then that shit, it rewinds, goes through back through his head. We see it travel, th- bro, across the city. And, like, as it's traveling across the city, pieces of it are like, like you know how a space shuttle go? Uh-huh. Space shuttle? It's like that, nigga. Like a bullet. Imagine a bullet with, like, a space shuttle so it can go farther. Okay. So it's, like, dropping pieces as it's going across the city. Oh, my God. Oh, bro, it's hard, nigga. And, like, it's going through different things. And then it finally goes back into the gun, and you see the dude who shoots him. Oh. All right? Fade to black. You hear Wesley. We see our boy McAvoy. He wakes up. All right? His girl's waking him up, and she starts hate. She hates him. She's like, you know, the one who was cheating on him. Mm-hmm. And she's shitting on the apartment. She's just complaining, complaining, right? He finally gets up. He goes to leave to work. Uh, when he goes to leave for work, you see him close his door. The next door to him is where the nigga with the sniper was sitting. Remember how it went all the way back? Uh-huh. That's next door to his oh. place. Oh, shit. All right? He don't know that. He just kind of looks at it like, and then he goes about his day. We see him at work. His the fat lady boss is being mean to him, yada yada. And she's like, I need a report on my desk in an hour. She starts going off, and you see him start narrating in his head how he has this stress-free keyboard. And he has it because he's such a fucking loser that without this keyboard, he like has little panic attacks. He's just hard on him. He's just talking yeah. shit about himself, right? And then right then someone asks him, like, yo, hey, yo, uh, Wesley, where's Barry? And he goes, Barry's at the dentist again. Cut to you see Chris Pratt fucking the shit out of his girl mm-hmm. at his place. Like he knows it too. Damn. How did he find out? I mean, not that he knows. He just knows. You can make... feel it. Yeah. Uh, that's a bummer. Is his so, girlfriend hot? Yeah. Uh, hot little blonde lady. Uh, even worse. But she's a bitch. Though. Like, like mm-hmm. she's hot, but like you don't like. Like they make you not like her. A. I mean, every time you see her, she's cheating on him or mm-hmm. she's yelling at him. So you're immediately like, yeah. This as is an audience member, you're like, I don't like this person. Yeah. Yeah. But she is hot. <sighs> so cut to we see uh, him hanging with Chris Pratt at the store. And like, like you see, like he's hanging out with them, and like you can tell, he just feels bad about himself. And he starts thinking about how bad his anxiety attacks are, and like yada yada. And cut back to him working, and he wishing he wasn't such a pussy. And the Janice lady starts yelling at him, and she's like, you know, you you don't do this right, you don't do that right. And you see this nigga start having like a panic attack, and she's like yelling at him, and like everything starts going like super slow motion. And he's like, I'm sorry, like he can't even get it out. She's like, what's wrong with you? And then he has to like take a bunch of pills, and like, oh, and he has to like take some breathing, like you know, he calms down. Then you hear his voiceover. The best thing about the end of this day is tomorrow, it starts all fucking over again. Oh, God. Right? This guy is sad. Oh, yeah. This guy needs, like, some kind of adventure in his life or something. <laughs> Do you think he's going to get it? <laughs> he, needs, he needs something. Do you think he's going to get he the adventure? Some ki- kind of excitement, maybe, or <laughs> he needs to be brought into some kind of, like, order, or, like, a community. Maybe a group of friends. Maybe a group of friends, like a sorority? So he needs a sorority. He needs a sorority. He needs a sorority, bro. sorority he needs a sorority. of assassins. <laughs> of assassins. <laughs> actually, already that sounds cool too. That is actually. <laughs> Should we it. write it, <laughs> bro? A lot of these things we're gonna write. <laughs> the moment this episode's over, yeah. most of these things we're gonna write. It. Oh, okay. So he goes. He checks his ATM, and my nigga's broke. Broke as fuck, right? Damn. He goes to the store because uh, he has to go to the pharmacy to get more pills. Pick up his like next order of pills, and he looks over. And he sees someone noticing him. He's like, what the fuck? And like, like, it's from a distance, though. And he kind of looks. And he begins, he's, he keeps looking. And then he looks back again. And he sees a nigga, like, kind of staring at him. And it's the cross dude from the beginning. Uh-huh. The dude who shot the dude from the sniper. Uh-huh. Right? And he kind of looks at him. And he's like, what the fuck? He's like, sees they're just staring at each other. And then he turns back. And nigga, Angelina Jolie is right here. Ooh. 
Yeah, nice. she's fine as hell too. Hell yeah. This is Mr. and Mrs. Smith. This is Mr. and Mrs. Smith, yeah. Angelina Jolie. This is like mid early 2000s. Bro, Ugh. she's in her bag. Damn. Okay. She's right here. And he's like, but, but I understand, like, even though she's hot, you still would be like, yo, this nigga's like really close. <laughs> like, so he's like, yo, what the fuck? And then he goes, I'm sorry. And she goes, you apologize too much. And he goes, I'm sorry about that. And she's like, oh. And then morning. she goes, I knew your father. And she goes, He's like, my father left the week I was born. She goes, no, your father died yesterday on a rooftop of a Metropolis building. And he starts laughing like, what the bitch, what the fuck you talking about? And she goes, your, father's one, your father was one of the greatest assassins to ever live. And the man who killed him, he's right behind you. She pulls out a gun. Bam! She shoots at the other, the cross nigga. He shoots at the same time. Their bullets, ting, like collide. Oh, my God. Right? Then, bro, she grabs him. In slow-mo, they start shooting at each other. And all their bullets are ding. Think like, bro, like these niggas is cold with it like that. You know mm. what I'm saying? And so you see a Wesley like finally breaks free of her grip and he takes off running and he almost gets shot and Angelina saves him and then she grabs him again. They take off outside and he he breaks her free and he's running into the street and he takes off to the parking lot and you see the the cross dude. He gets in a truck and he starts taking after him and our girl pulls up in like a red Corvette and she kicks open the door and she spins a motherfucking car and spins this nigga into the car. As he's screaming, and he's like, ah, what the <laughs> fuck? And he spins into the car, right? So he's just yelling in the car like a big pussy. A big car chase happens. And he's like, yo, I'm an accountant. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, this, mm-hmm. like, why, why am I in this situation? Like, please stop. He's like begging. And then she's just shooting out the window. Bro, she's like leaning outside the car doing like cool Matrix shit. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, what the fuck is going on? Pretty much kind of like Neil on the Matrix. Right. That level of like, what the fuck is going on? She finally flips the car, like, on top of a bus. It lands, and then she, like, drives away. Like, she gets away from the dude. You know what I mean? Fade to black. Our boy, he's passed. He passed out in the car. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it fucks him up. Yeah. He wakes up. He's in a warehouse. All right? He gets up. There's a white dude sitting here. He's like, what the fuck? He turns. There's this other big white dude. He turns over here. It's fucking common. Oh, no way. The rapper. Oh, I'd be scared. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, bro, you saw two white dudes and you look over here in Commons and right there? Commons, like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Turns around, it's Angelina Jolie. He's like, yo, what the fuck? And then he hears, I thought he'd be taller. And he looks up and it's fucking Morgan Freeman. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. Someone's world is getting turned upside down. <laughs> bro, Morgan Freeman, Angelina Jolie, and one. Common? In Common? God. I love the 2000s. Bruh, <laughs> put him in a movie. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yo, I'm an accountant, yada, yada. If you call my boss, you can explain. And our boy Morgan Freeman walks up, and he goes, those flies right there in that room. And he points over there. He said, there, he said, there are flies in the, in, on that trash can. And he hands him a gun. Shoot the wings off the flies. <laughs> He's like, the fuck? No. Like, I, what do you even mean, right? And then Common puts a gun to the back of his head. He goes, either shoot the wings off the flies or I, I shoot you. And he's like, what? what? And he goes, one. He's like, okay, okay. And he grabs a gun, two. He's like, I, I can't, look, look, I can't, I can't even see him. Three. And as he says three, he fucking like, he zones in. And he fucking panics. And he pop, 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 shoots like six times. And then he goes and he sits down. And he like tries to breathe. And then Morgan Freeman walks up. And he holds out the flies. And all the flies are shot with the wings off. Whoa. And he goes, that's impossible. He goes, a lot of things were before today. <laughs> <laughs> what you experience, Wesley, is not a panic attack. Your heart beats at 180 beats per minute. It allows you to react faster than anyone else on the planet Earth. You and only a few people can do this. Your father was one of them. You just have to learn how to control these attacks. I'm Sloan. This is Fox. He points at Angelina Jolie. Uh-huh. Right? Our boy backs up. He, he grabs the gun. He backs up. He goes, this is insane. This is saying, like, get away from me, right? He goes, no, insanity is being, on, being shit on, beat down, coasting through life when you have a caged lion locked inside you. And he goes, that gun belonged to your father. He could conduct a symphony orchestra with it. You will use it to kill him. The man who tried to kill you tonight, your father was one of, uh, you, your, he, he, he was a part of, he, he and your father were one of the fraternity of assassins. We transferred all of his assets to you. They're substantial. It's your long-awaited destiny to join us, Wesley. And Wesley's like, the fuck out of here! And he runs away. Right? He's like, I'm not. Get away from me. Right? And he, he goes home. He wakes the next day. He's all panicked. 
he sees the gun on the floor and he's like, holy shit, like this really happened. He takes the gun, he puts it in the back of the toilet, he just sits there. He gets ready for work, he goes to the ATM, he checks his account, it's over three million in that bitch. Nice. Not bad. I expected more. I expected more too. I expected I'm way gonna, more. In my head, I'm not gonna lie, I expected anything over ten. I was expecting like between ten to fifteen, maybe yeah. twenty. Yeah, I was thinking like a ridiculous amount. Like maybe like thirty, forty. Sure, yeah, because it's like he's one of the greatest assassins. Maybe, maybe he has other kids. But then again, even if you're a great assassin, it's like you still just work for somebody. Yeah, you're just another cog. You're just a cog. You're like not, you are just a shit. cog. Like it's, mm-hmm. so it's like it's like a player in the NBA. It's like if I'm a, if I own the team, right? Yeah, it's like but I give you thirty million a year. Mm-hmm. Sounds pretty good. It does sound good. It sounds great. But the owner makes. I make a billion. A year. I make like three billion a year. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, what do you mean? True. I'm sure Morgan Freeman has probably that money. In this That's what I, exactly. Yeah, he's probably it, the owner. Somebody, somebody has to run it. Yeah. So. Uh, Still good though. Three million. It is three. I mean, yeah, I mean we are yeah. we are shooting on three million. Going, going from nothing. <laughs> going going from Chris Pratt's fucking your girlfriend to three million. It's not bad. <laughs> Yo, that literally the next scene he sees Chris Pat, Pratt and he smiles. That's the next shot. Oh he really? Just, Damn. He sees, he sees the back I am him. <laughs> I am James McAvoy. <laughs> Y'all both had the first same thought. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty insane. The next shot. So he sees Chris Pratt and he smiles. And Chris Pratt comes up. He's like, Yo, what's up with you, man? You're here early. You look good. Mm-hmm. He goes, Yeah. I feel different. And Chris Pratt's like all nervous and he kind of like, oh, all right, man. And he walks off. Janice comes up and she starts yelling at him about his poor attitude and his management skills and yada, yada. And he's not getting the job done. And then she, you see him like he was looking up stuff on his computer. She's like, what were you even looking up here? And he was looking up his father's death, how some random guy was shot on top of a building mm-hmm. the other day. And she goes, who's this prick? Got his head blown off on a building. And he goes, shut the fuck up. Damn. And then the whole office is like, and he grabs her stapler and he throws it and he starts talking about how fat she is. <laughs> <laughs> you fat fucking bitch. <laughs> and he goes, and if you weren't such a fat bitch, we would all feel so sorry for you. <laughs> like, we probably all like you. <laughs> he goes, but I think I speak for the whole office when I say go fuck yourself. And he grabs his keyboard and he starts walking out and Chris Pratt's like, bro, that was awesome. Who's the man? And he goes for a high five and he's like, it takes the keyboard, wham, right across this nigga's face. And as it hits his face, like blood everywhere, and then across the screen is really cool shot. You see all the keys come up and they spell out fuck you as they come across the screen. Nice. Right? And you see this nigga step outside and he's breathing and Angelina Jolie er, pulls up. And he's like, and he gets in the car, and she has shades on. He's driving. He looks at her, and he puts shades on. And then this nigga's like, no. And he takes them off. And he, like, he puts his seatbelt on. Like, he immediately is like, uh, like, all right, let me chill. I got to be myself still. Bro, it makes you, this movie, you're all like, you get why James McAvoy. Because this is the first thing I remember ever seeing him in. Because mm-hmm. this is what made him a star. This is like the earliest thing I remember. I remember the trailers for this. I oh, yeah, the trailers him. were a big deal. Because it was mm-hmm. like, oh, curved. Everyone knows. Right. The class, You know, we'll get there. But I do remember... When you because watching this today, and I've seen this movie a bunch of times because I love this movie, but re watching it today, I was like, Oh, yeah, you really, you, he's like, you just like him, yeah, you're just like, oh, I like this guy, he's a guy, he's a guy, and, yeah. and he's uh, he can act like mm-hmm. each little decision he's making, like you just that little thing with the glasses that's that's that was a good choice mm-hmm. to be like, You're seeing her, and she's so cool, yeah, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna be cool like her, and then like, you, you know what I mean, and the way he does it, you're like, Oh man, you, you know what I'm saying, like, he, he's pulling off this action movie very well, yeah. which is hard to do. Yeah, definitely. it's hard to pull off an act. Niggas think action movies are easy. It's like, nah, bro, those are like hard movies to make good and memorable. And this is one of true, them. True, true. So he, uh, you know, he starts talking to her, and she takes him like he's just kind of talking like nonstop, and she's just not answering him. Mm-hmm. And she takes him super far out to this like private castle. It's huge looking the warehouse. It's huge looking warehouse, and it says the textile factory. Ooh, All right, generic. Come on. Mm. They go inside. And you see these huge textile machines all working. You see all these people inside, mm. like at work, like regular workers. And you see Morgan Freeman doing like managerial stuff for the textile factory, <laughs> like regular shit. Uh-huh. Right. And our boy comes up and he goes, is this a front? This is awesome. And Morgan Freeman's like, a front for what? He goes, for assassinations. <laughs> <laughs> right? oh, like, what a fish out of water. <laughs> <just> like, <clearly. laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> this guy, huh? <laughs> And he goes, it's not a front. It's a textile mill. And it's a damn good one. And he goes, okay, but, like, that's bullshit, right? Like, all these guys are killers. And it's quiet. And he goes, don't you owe me answers? I mean, come on, man. Do you guys make sweaters or you kill people? And it's now everyone's kind of just looking at him. It's quiet. And you see this one guy, he has a little pet rat, and he's just, like, feeding it, right, as he's watching. 
And Morgan Freeman goes, are you sure you're ready for the answers? And he goes, yes. He's like, I can't go back to my regular life. Not now. And Morgan Freeman just looks at Fox, Angelina Jolie, and he goes, he's all yours. And she goes, okay, let's go. Uh, right? And he's like, what, what the fuck? So they take him to this room, right? And you see the, this white dude, the white dude that he saw earlier, this blonde hair white dude. And he goes, how you doing? I'm the repairman. And the, our boy, James McAvoy, sitting in the chair. He's like, okay, what do you repair? And our boy goes, a lifetime of bad habits. And James McAvoy's like, all right. And he goes, I'm going to take, he's like, I'm going to tie your arms behind your back. And he's like, oh, oh, oh. He's like, it's okay. And he ties him really slow and he goes, that's not too tight, right? And James McAvoy's like, no, it's actually not bad. It's very nice. And you see Fox just staring at him, Angelina Jolie. And then she goes, Wesley, why did you come here? And he goes, what do you mean? You brought me here. Bam! That nigga hits him so hard in the face. And he goes, oh! Right? And then one, bam, bam! And then our boy's unconscious. Mm. Okay? And he wakes up and he's in like this, like a butcher, like a like with pigs and cow meat, like a butcher area, right? Mm -hmm. And he's all fucked up. His face is fucked up. And he's like, oh. And you see this big fat dude with a bunch of knives standing there. And he goes, how many punches before he counts the sheep? And Angelina goes, four. And he goes, hmm. And then the big dude, bam, he slaps the shit out of him. He goes, here's what you need to know, puto. Knives are easy to hide. And like he, like he has this huge knife and then it's gone. And he goes, and they don't jam. And then it's right back. And he goes, and they don't run out of bullets. And they like, he has another one like right here, right? And then he's like, the fuck? He goes, and they come in candy for close contact work. So he gives him a knife and he goes, now, you try to cut me. And he goes, what? And he goes, stick me with it. Come on. He goes, bro, be careful. That's like really sharp. <laughs> <laughs> like he doesn't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, that's, that's dangerous. He said it like, <laughs> literally like, dude, chill. <laughs> And he goes, come on, pussy. And he goes, I'm not a pussy. He goes, come on, pussy. And he's like, I'm not a pussy. And he's like, 21 Savage. He literally says it like 21 Savage. He goes, pussy. <laughs> and then he goes, come on. And he tries to stab him. And then our, the other dude takes a knife, slices him up like three times real quick, and then takes his hand and puts it on the table and goes, shink, right through his hand. Oh and he's like, ah. And then he passes out. <sighs> he wakes up. He's covered in like, he's in a bathtub, right? Like a stone bathtub. And he, he's covered in cream. Like, in a, like, like, a, like it's hard though. And he's mm, 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 and he, and like, it's, it's on his face too. Oh and he's like, mm. and then finally this dude comes up and he's like, it's, like, shh, 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 it's okay, it's okay. And he goes, what? What is this? What is this? He's like, this is the recovery room. This bath make bruises, scars, uh, bruises, scars, broken bones, bullet wounds. Makes them heal in hours, not days. Wow. He was like, mm, mm, right? Comes to, he, he falls back asleep. The next day he wakes up and he's talking to Common, who's the gunsmith. Mm -hmm. And they pull these bodies up and they're like, all right, you're going to have to shoot these bodies. And he's like, holy shit, those look realistic. And he walks up to him and he touches one. And he's like, yo. And he's like, yo, this is a fucking dead woman. <laughs> he goes, man, this can't, we can't shoot this woman. This could be someone's mom. Bam. You see like her head, like half her head explode. And then Angelina Jolie is like this. You got to know what it's like to put a bullet in a body. Ooh, he's like, what the fuck? Cold line. Bruh. That's a kill. So the next day, they ask him again, like, yo, why are you here? And he, he gives, like, this big, long answer that he thinks is real. Like, because this is what I, you know, I'm supposed to do, and yada, yada, right? And then he looks up, and then the guy just kind of keeps looking at him, and he goes, fuck. And then the dude just goes, bop, 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 and he's unconscious again. <laughs> you know? Cut to him with common again. And they're like, yo, shoot the target. And they hand him a gun. And he's like. I can't shoot the target. And they go, why? And he goes, there's a pig in the way. How am I supposed to shoot the target? And you see Morgan Freeman come out the shadows, and he's like, not how, but what if someone told you, what, what, what if no one ever told you that bullets shoot straight, and I told you to hit that target then, what would you do? Well, you would just let your instincts guide you. And he takes the gun from him, and he goes, boom, and the fucking bullet goes, boom. The and curve. it's that from the commercial. The, the, curve, you know, the yeah. curve bullet, bro. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what sold this movie. When niggas saw that shit in the trailer, people were like, well. <laughs> now we have to see it. I have to see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you see our boy. He's talking to Angelina Jolie on a rooftop. And he's like, how the fuck did he do that? Can you do that? Like, he fucking curved it. That was cool as shit. And then he looks over and you see this train go by. And he goes, hey, that's the old train next to my place. And then she pushes him onto that motherfucker. It's like going fast and shit. Mm -hmm. And he's like, ah! And then she jumps down, down and she's like, come on, let's race. And he's like, no! 
And he's screaming. She's like, let's go. And they start running. He's like, are you out of your fucking mind? And she's running. You see a bridge coming up. And he's like, hey. And at the last second, this bitch, like, drops down. And the bridge goes over. And you see him trying to, like, avoid it. And then he trips. And his fucking head, boom, hits that bitch. And he's oh, knocked out again. Damn. Oh, bro, he's like. Getting, getting knocked out a lot. Oh, he's getting really hurt. Cup to him in the bath. And he wakes up again. He's like, oh, I feel, oh, I feel good. Right? Yes. We see Common talking to Morgan Freeman. You see our boy in the bathtub, and you see a camera pans up. Common's talking to Morgan Freeman, and he's like, yo, these assassins keep dying. Cross is taking out our, all our boys one by one. And Morgan Freeman goes, Wesley is the only one who can get to him. And then he's like, oh, well, what do we do? He's like, he's getting closer each hour. Just get back to work. So they get back to work, right, training him and shit. You see Fox takes him into, like, this uh, textile part of the factory, and she, she tells him, like, hey, you see, you see, like, the textile machines working, like, shink, 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 shink. You see all, you know, like, strings, like, mm-hmm. these big things. And you see this little thing going back and forth, right? And she goes, grab it. And she goes, what? She's like, catch it. And he's like, all right. And he looks at it, and he reaches in and tries to catch it, and it cuts the shit out of his hand. He's like, fuck. And then she's like, he goes, put a gun to my head. Then I can probably do it. She's like, no, you got to control yourself on your own. Do it again. And he's like. Shink, and he can't do it. And he's like, fuck, and he's like, now blood went everywhere. Mm-hmm. He's like, fuck, and he storms out. He's all pissed. Cut to him. He's in the repair bath again, and he's getting fixed up, and he's talking to the repair the recovery guy. And the recovery guy tells him how people think rats love cheese. No, nah, what rats really love is peanut butter. Mm-hmm. And you know what peanut butter is great for? And he goes, what? And the guy goes, explosives. He goes, watch this. And he puts this little thing on a rat, and he he gives this rat this like peanut butter and the rat goes forward. Like he, he puts the rat like all the way over here, like across the room and he comes back and then he hits a button and the rat explodes. Oh shit. Yeah. And he's like, see that? And Wesley's like, what the fuck? And then he goes, uh, now imagine what a thousand of those rats could do. You know what I mean? And he's like, what the fuck? This guy is crazy, <laughs> right? <laughs> like they're, they, kill, they're killing rats now. <laughs> yes. He looks over, and as he looks over, this is that also from the trailer. You see Angelina Jolie ass, actual ass shot. Oh, whole ass. Oh, bro, it's insane. Damn. Back, like back, tatted up ass, and you see her getting out the tub, and then she looks back, and then she puts the towel on, like, mm. and it's like, God damn. Nice. Cut to they're at the they're seeing the repair man again, and they go to see the repair man again, and now she starts beating the shit out of him too. She's like, you need to stop wasting my time. Why the fuck are you here? And he's like, I don't know. She keeps beating him. Why the fuck are you here? I don't know. She has brass knuckles out. And she starts beating him on his body. She's like, why are you here? And then he finally, he's like, I don't know who I am. And you see him, he's like, oh, bloodied up. And then she stops and she smiles. Right? And then Morgan Freeman, you hear Morgan Freeman go, do you really want to know who you are? And he takes him in this room. And he's like, this is your father's old room. And he sees the picture from the guy from the beginning. He's like, he was a member of this fraternity, and he went rogue. And then he sees, the, like, in, the, in that same picture with his dad, you see Cross in the background. He goes, Cross, that's the man. He started, and you're, you know what Cross did was he started by killing the one man better than your father, uh, better than him, which is your father. He blindsided him over on a rooftop, betrayed him. Everything in this room, the books, the weapons, the clothes, clothes they all belong to him. You find the connection, Wesley. Then maybe you'll find out who you really are. So he's going going through all his father's shit, and he feels, starts feeling good. Like the, He says, like, I can finally have a life. You know, I, I, all I got to do now is train harder. And, and I realize who I really am. I'm supposed to be as good, my, as good as my father, better than him. And he starts training. He gets better. He's getting better. He's getting better. And he starts studying everything about Cross, right, the other guy. And he's like, I got to learn my enemy. And every movie he ever made, and, attack, every, and every attack he's ever executed. And he said, what I'm learning about him is he's always one chest move ahead. He's always one step quicker. In all my research, he's never missed a target, not until me, right? He's like, apparently, he's like, he's clearly the greatest of all time. And he says all this while he's training. This is training is still happening. And then you see the repairman, like, fucking him up. And then the repairman hits him again, and his hand almost breaks. And the repairman's like, fuck. And you see McAvoy get free, and then he starts beating the shit out of the repairman. Oh, no way. And he knocks him unconscious. Hell, yeah. Then you see him training with the knives, dude. And he, he's getting stabbed up, and then he gets the knife, dude, and he fucks him up, right? And then you see him catch the textile thing, and he's like, yeah. And you see him running on the train and like hopping over, and he like hops over the bridge and shit with E. Like he's just killing it now, right? And Angelino G is like, holy shit. You see him at one point, he tries to curve the bullet. He still can't do it though. He's like, fuck. And everything stops. Mm. And then Angelino looks at Sloan and Morgan Freeman nods. And she, she walks out in front of the pig and she goes, shoot the target. And he's like, you're fucking crazy. And she goes, shoot it. And he's like, 
and his heart started beating. And then he runs at her, and he goes, ah, and he shoots, and then a bullet comes right at her head, and at the last second, that bitch goes, like right around, and it fucking hits the, the bullseye. Nice. And then they're all like, welcome he to the fraternity. It. He did it. Bro. Hell yeah. What if he shot Angelina Jolie? Bro, <laughs> I, I think about that all the time. <laughs> he just fucking blew her head off. And Morgan Freeman's like, ah, you're still in, I guess. <laughs> We I mean, we'll still teach you how to do it, but fuck. Now we're down one, so we have to put you in. <laughs> There's like a no-lose situation for him at all. <laughs> also, I don't know why I let her do that. I mean, eventually you would have learned how to do this. Fuck. <laughs> the, pig, like, the pigs were fine. <laughs> so you see our boy Sloan, Morgan Freeman, he takes him into this like secret textile room, like, we're, like even more private, right? Mm. And it's this one machine, just one machine going, and it's making these like little fabrics. And he goes, we call this room the loom of fate. He goes, after today, you will never set foot in it again. And James is like, why? He's like, because like an apostle, you don't interpret, you deliver. He goes, every culture in history has a secret code. Once, one you won't find in any text known to man. A clan, uh, he goes, a clan of weavers long ago found a language hidden in these fabrics. They called themselves the fraternity. And he's looking at it. And he's like, all I see is threads. He goes, look closer. He goes, see that? And he, has, he like looks closer and he sees one thread is like clearly over the like everything looks the same, but there's one thread over instead of under. Mm-hmm. All right. And you can see it. And he goes, Oh, it's a misweave. He goes, It's what, it's just a mistake? He goes, No, it's a code. It's a code? He goes, Yeah. He goes, if it's on top, it's a one. And then he points at another fabric. And it, you see that it's all fine except one of the threads is below. And it's like you'd only notice it's like, but you'd have to like look mm-hmm. damn it, like with a magnifying glass to notice it, right? He goes, That's a zero. He's like, Oh, it's binary code. He goes, what's it say? He goes, a name, a target. And he's like, but, but where do the names come from? They come from necessity, Wesley, to maintain balance in the world. Orders that must be executed so we can forge stability out of chaos. Ooh. And then you see him do the, like, he gets all the fabrics that come out, and he puts the code together, and then it says a name, and he gives him a name, right? And he goes, what? Robert Dean Darden? He goes, I thought you brought me here to kill Cross. He goes, you will in time, but this is your first name. Mm-hmm. I interpret, you deliver. He goes, you want me to kill Robert Dean Darden? Not me, Wesley. Fate. Whoa. Bro, this movie's crazy, bro. Yeah. This, that's why this movie, bro, this movie is huge, but like, bro, I think I saw this thing in theater, theaters twice because it was like, bro, this shit was crazy. So mm-hmm. Fox, it, like, it gets better somehow. Mm-hmm. So Fox tells him like, yo, <laughs> he, yo, like the guy you're going to kill is going to be in a conference room. Stop looking at the notes. I'm not, I'm not Head right. chair. <laughs> uh, it's a six-window room. Shoot through the fifth. That's where you'll get them. So they get on the train. They're riding it. They're riding through the city. They start coming closer. She goes, fifth window. Now everything slows down. You see him, like, zone in, and he's about to shoot, and he takes a deep breath, and he doesn't do it. Uh, right? And he looks at her, and he goes, what did you do to deserve to die? You didn't know. And they don't say anything, right? So cut to, they're back in the they're back at the warehouse and they're sitting in like the recovery bath. And he goes, Was he bad? Was he evil? We don't know anything. We get orders from a loom and we take it on faith. K- killing something we know nothing about. I, I don't know if I can. And it's quiet. And Angelina Jolie, Jolie, she sits down next to him and she goes, About 20 years ago, there was this girl. Her dad was a federal judge. So if I had to guess, she probably had it in her mind. Maybe one day she was going to be a federal judge following his footsteps. So she's home for Christmas, and Dad's on this big racketeering case. And apparently the defendants, they wanted a softer judge. So they hire a guy, Max Petrich. And they get him to pay, my fa- they get him to pay the father a visit. And the way he would pay his visits is he would break in, tie up that guy's loved ones so the target would do whatever he says. Then he would tar- the, tie up the target and burn the target alive in front of his loved ones. And you see this little girl watching all this shit, watching her father getting burned alive, right? Then he would take a wire hanger and he'd twist it up and he'd brand his initials in all of them so they wouldn't forget him. And he's like, what the fuck? She goes, after I was recruited in the fraternity, I found out his name came up weeks before the federal judge was killed and a member of the fraternity failed to pull the trigger we don't know how far the ripples go wesley you kill one you maybe save a thousand and that's the code that's the fraternity 
that's why we do it. And she gets up and she turns and leaves. And when she gets up and leaves, he notices she has a little itty bitty branding on the side of her neck. Oh, it was her. Bru- <laughs> it was her. I thought it was going to be Morgan Freeman. I thought Morgan Freeman was a little crazy. That actually would have been fire. <laughs> that, <been crazy. laughs> that actually would have been so fire. <laughs> Cut to they go back. And you see him riding on that train again. And he gets to that fifth window and he blasts the shit out that nigga. And you see nice. her watching and she smiles. Nice. Is she vibing? She likes Is there like a little like ooh? It's a, yeah, she like, ooh, I do that shit. Yeah. Right? He goes to get another game. It's not another name. It's not cross. He's like, what the fuck? He's pissed, right? Mm-hmm. He has to kill this other guy. He has to do it in like this three block radius, and the guy has like a bulletproof window. And he does it by like flipping the car in mid like bro, he does some cool shit and the car flips in midair and he kills him through the sunroof. You know what I'm saying? Like it's amazing. And then he goes back to uh uh so you see him kill that dude. Him and Fox, they go back to his old place. Knocks on the door. Barry answers. Barry's like, oh, shit. It's Chris Pratt. He's like, oh, shit. Uh, what are you doing here, man? I-, I miss you, buddy. And then you see our boy kick the door open and knocks Barry's dick. Like, breaks his nose. He falls. He's just bleeding. You see our boy. You see the girl come out and goes, Barry, you're a fucking piece of shit. Are you going to come back now? Yada, yada. He goes to the bathroom. He gets the gun from the back of the toilet. She keeps yelling at him. You're not half the man Barry is. He pleased me in ways you never could. You Ooh. fucking loser. You see Angelina Jolie hearing all this, and she kind of smiles, and she walks in, and the other girl goes, who's this whore? And then she grabs <laughs> fucking James McAvoy by the back of the hair, and she kisses the shit out of him. Nice. And you see him like, what the fuck? And then everything slows down, and they start making it hard as fuck. And then Chris Pratt goes, damn. He is the man. He as says he, that? As his nose is like bleeding. <laughs> he says that. Yo, Chris Pratt's that dog, bro. He's got that dog in him, you know? Yeah, yeah. He's real. He's a real guy. Yeah, yeah. So they head outside, and he like, can't believe her boy, can't believe they kissed. And she's like, yo, I'm going to go get the car. I'll be right back. She heads to go get the car. He's sitting there. He looks up. He sees Cross across the street. He's like, shit. They start shooting at each other. The bullets, ding, ding, smashing mm-hmm. into each other, right? Yeah. He runs after him. He's taking off. They, they get to like this abandoned area. He goes up top. He's looking for him. He's looking for him. He can't find him. He hears footsteps behind him. He turns. He blasts. It's the recovery dude, you know, the rat guy. He shoots him. Oh. He's like, oh, no. And then right then from far away, you see Cross, like all the way, like he's like all the way around the building. He fucking shoots and curves the bullet, and it fucking, boom, hits our boy, James McAvoy, oh. right? So they you know, you see all the other assassins come up. They get them both back to the building. They put them in the recovery thing. Our boy's fine, James McAvoy, but you see the, the guy he shot, the rat dude? Mm-hmm. He fucking dies. Damn. Right? Damn, that sucks. So our boy comes to and takes the bullet out of his arm. Right? When he comes to and he, out of the, he has a bullet like in his shoulder, he takes it out. And he does his, like, work on it and research, and he finds out it's a traceable bullet. He's like, yo, this guy never uses traceable bullets. We might be able to find him, yada, yada. He tells Morgan Freeman, who made it, and, like, yo, like, I, I know where to find him. He's fucking taunting me. Like, he would only do this because, like, he's not, he would never do it on purpose. He doesn't use traceable bullets. So mm-hmm. it's like, this guy's, a, like, he wants me to find him. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Sending me a message. Yada, yada. I'm going to send him one back. I'm going to fucking kill him. And then Fox and Sloan are like, yo, it's a trap. He clearly wants you to come. Like, that's what he wants. And he goes, no, fuck that. A member of the fraternity is dead because of me. I have to do this. I'm going to do this. And they're like, okay, go. He leaves. And then you see, Fox looks at Morgan Freeman. And she's like, that was not a good idea. He goes, like, he, he kind of like goes like this, like, you know, like, hey, it's not, what are we going to do? And then the loom pulls out another sheet of, like, a, the loom makes another mm-hmm. name and he hands it to her. It's Wesley's name. Oh, and she no. looks at it and he goes, your next assignment. Damn. They already made out. They did Life of an Assassin, dude. Damn, that sucks. That's why I can never do it. That's why I know. I mean, I yeah. know you want to. That's why. I, also, why I picked this movie for you. And <laughs> Peter did. <laughs> Peter knows me. <laughs> so Wesley goes to the other textile factory, right, where he finds out like, where the bullet was made to track Cross down, and he comes up on the guy who made it. And when he comes up on him, the old dude, it's an old guy who you've seen in other movies, right? He's like a famous actor, but I can't think of his name. But he's been in a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. He takes off running and he chases after him, and then he, he him and Fox finally like corner him, right. They got a gun to his head, and they show him the bullet. And they go, I need to meet the man you made this for. And they put a gun to it. Like, like if you don't, I'll fucking, like, I'm going to start blowing pieces off of you. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I can arrange a meeting. So they go to this train station, and they're watching the guy from afar. And they're watching him, and they're watching him. And finally, you see the guy kind of get nervous and take off. Like, the old guy, like, he goes, fuck it. Like, I, I don't want to do this, right? And he takes off. And they take off running after him. And they're both running and running. And as they run after him, you see they both run by Cross, who's just kind of leaned up on the train. Right? Wesley keeps running, and then he realizes, like, that was fucking cross, mm-hmm. right? And he stops, and he hops back onto the train, and the train takes off. 
our girl Angelina Jolie turns around and she notices the train taking off and he's not there. And she's like, shit. She steals the car. She starts following the train. You see the camera pan back. The dude who made the bullets for Cross calls him. And she goes, hey, he goes, he's, I, got, uh, I got him on the train. He's alone. And Cross goes, thank you. And they hang Like, they were working together the whole Damn. time, clearly. Damn. All right? So Wesley, he's going through the train, gun out. People are panicking. And finally, Cross sneaks up behind him and they start fighting. So they're fighting, they're fighting. He breaks off free. They start running. They're shooting each other. The bullets are hitting. They're curving. The bullets are hitting. Like they're doing this crazy Damn. fight scene in the train. Angelina Jolie finally says, fuck it, uses the car and jumps that motherfucker and it smashes into the train. So now she's like, Shh, into the train, right? Whoa. So she gets out and she's getting into the fight. But when she does this, the train kind of like got knocked off the rails a little bit. The conductor tries to hit the emergency brakes. And when it does this, the train's already like kind of off the rails and it fucking boom, like, like bounces off the rails, and then it falls, and, like, they're on a bridge, and it slides off. So now the Ooh. back of the train is, like, ding, 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 like, coming off, right, as the rest of it's going forward, and you see it, like, starting to, like, fall down a thing. And as it falls, it fucking, bam, it smashes into the rocks on the side. So you see, like, half the train's up top, the other half's, like, dangling down a cliff. You know what I mean? So, bro, what you see, as it's dangling, like, Wesley and Angelina Jolie are, like, trying to climb up so they can get back up to where, like, the train is level. And as they're doing this, like, the train falls. Like, the back of the bottom of the train falls. So, they, like, it's just, like, Angelina Jolie is up here. You see our boy hanging on for dear life, right? The train falling behind him. He's about to fall. Fucking Cross grabs him. Cross grabs him? Grabs him. Uh-oh. He grabs him. And he goes to pull him up. And our boy's looking at him. And he's like, man, Fuck this dude. So as he pulls him all the way up, he pulls out his gun, shoots that nigga. Wow. All right? So when he shoots him, and he, now they're both in the train, the train, the, that, the part of the train they're on, it falls, right? It, so now all three of them are like, boom, getting slammed. As, it, as it's falling down this cliff, as it falls, it kind of lands like, if the cliff's like this, it lands like that. Like, it gets stuck in the middle. Oh. Okay. And there's a river gotcha. below. Okay? Mm-hmm. Our boy gets up. They're all beat to shit. He gets up. He stands over him. And, and, Cross is like, Wesley, Wesley. He's like, shut the fuck up. He puts the gun in his head. He goes, everything they told you was a lie. You are my son. And he dies. Damn. (laughs) Now that's a twist. (laughs) (laughs) So he hears Fox step behind him. And he turns around. It's Angelina Jolie. She's got blood all on her face and the gun's in her hand. He's like, is it true? And she's like, she nods. He goes, why'd you make me do this? She goes, you're the only person he wouldn't kill. Oh, man. And she goes, he's like, you knew the entire time? And she goes, she looks at him and it's quiet. And she goes, his name came up. And then she finally goes, and so does yours. And she goes to shoot him. And right as she goes to shoot him, he shoots below him. Like, because they're like on, you know, they're in the train. Mm -hmm. And they're on the, the glass, and he shoots below him, so him and his father fall through the window. And then they fall, like, so far into the river. Ooh. All right? Cut to our boy wakes up. Right? He's, like, knocked out. He wakes up, and he's in one of those baths. Right? He's in a room in one of those baths, those healing baths. He's like, Ooh. And he looks around, and he's in his dad's old apartment, which is, remember, the the – Apartment by his place. Uh-huh. Remember the yeah. movie started? That, he's in that place, oh, by his shit. old place. And he looks over, and it's the old dude who made the bullets. And he goes, I promise your father, if anything happened to you, I'd bring you here. And you see him wow. like, what the fuck? And he goes, your father was never more than a camera click away, son. And you see him look around, and it's pictures from his whole life. This nigga's just been stalking him. Ooh, a little creepy. A little, it a little is. Creepy. Oh, because all bit. the pictures of him are like f- uh, from a distance. Mm-hmm. But it's like his birthday, him on a bike, him. So him as a child. Him as a child. All, all the way, his whole life. How do you explain that? He's just been following him. <laughs> Our boy obviously breaks down. He's like, what the fuck? He can't believe it. He goes, I killed my father. He goes, to your father, protecting you was worth giving up his own life. He goes, protect me? He was trying to kill me. He goes, no. He was trying to rescue you. And you see our boy start remembering everything. And you can tell, like, as he remembers it, like, wow, he never really tried to kill. Like, you know, like, damn, mm-hmm. every bullet really didn't, you know what I mean? Right, they, they hit each other. Or he was trying to hit her, Angelina Jolie. Yeah, oh, man. He was really trying to hit her, because she's bad. She ain't good for Yeah, him. right. It's but that's the best twist. It was like, damn, because you know, it's like, oh, damn, she was a bad person. So he remembers everything. 
and you hear the dude tell him, Sloan hunted you down. And he said, he goes, Sloan was really, he goes, it wasn't your father hunting you down, it was Sloan. And Fox was the one who wanted her teeth in you. Mm-hmm. Right? The girl. And you see them, like, planning all this shit. Yeah. Fox is alone. And he goes, your father never wanted you in the fraternity, Wesley. He wanted a different path for you. He wanted things you could never, he wanted things, you to have things he never could. A home. Peace. For you to find your own way in life. Wow. And then he goes, but then your father got a hold of this. And you see him hand him this textile. It's a napkin. He goes, decipher it. And he starts deciphering it. And he goes, Sloan apparently started changing the names for his own profit. And when your father found out, and he goes, so that's how my father's name came up? And he goes, and he starts, and he deciphers the name that he, of the thing that his father found, and it was Sloan's name. Wow. So Sloan's own name came up. Whoa. From the loom? Yeah. Oh, and he shit. hid that shit, and then homeboy found out. So that's how this all started. Damn. Right? And he gives him a plane ticket, and he goes, you want me to run? He goes, no, son, I want you to live, have a different life like your father wanted. He goes in, he thinks about it, he goes into a room, he sees a jacket, he puts it on, it's his dad's. And then he notices like this fake wall and he opens it up. And inside's like so many weapons and like bombs and like Perfect. all kinds of shit and dope ass guns and mm-hmm. shit. And you see uh, Fox is waiting, Morgan Freeman is waiting at the castle and he sees Sloane come back and she's all beat up. And he's looking at her and then she's, he's like, and? And he, she goes, we trained him well. And she kind of like pushes him aside. Like, mm-hmm. you know, this nigga's good now. Mm-hmm. Right? So we see our boy, he's going through his father's all his guns and his, these bombs and shit and then he's going through all these notebooks he has on the table and he finds out he has all these plans to destroy the factory wow like he like they're already there Ooh. right so our boy gets like he, he remembers what the rat dude told him and he goes and he buys a million peanut butters wow okay and he goes my and you hear the voiceover my father was wrong, wrong about one thing everything they said wasn't a lie they thought and you see him like preparing all this shit he's like they thought me the uh, they trained. They, they taught me how to kill. They taught me how to feel no pain, and they taught me how every job has a perfect weapon. Well, I am the perfect weapon. And I, uh, he goes, and am I supposed to run? I've been doing that my whole life. I say, fuck them, kill them all. Let fate sort out the mess. And we see our boy making all this bomb peanut butter, like explosive peanut butter. And you see him make a, like this little contraption so all the rats start eating it. Mm-hmm. And you see thousands of rats coming up onto this truck eating this fucking peanut butter. Dude. You know what I mean? Mm. And he pulls up and he's got this huge blue dump truck and then he, he he fucking bashes it into the fucking textile factory. And you hear Sloan say real calmly, kill him. <laughs> and you see, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> they just start shooting at him, right? And he just opens the back up and like a million rats start coming out. And it's all like, like, a million rats are coming out, and some of them have, like, little washers on their back. Not all of them, but some of them do. Mm-hmm. And they're going through the factory so fast because they're rats. They're just all going yeah. through the factory, so they're everywhere. And you see Wesley check his timer. Four, three, two. Hell, yeah. Everything rat, explodes. Rat bombs. As, bro, rat bombs. Rat bombs. And That's they're, so like, sick. exploding at different, like, because, bro, as they're exploding one by one in mm-hmm. slow motion on some, like, on some the, the flash shit or something, mm-hmm. he takes off running. Oh, so he yeah. starts running through the building, and he's killing every. He jumps through the glass, just bullet, boom, boom, boom. Headshot and everybody. And as he's running through, he's, like, grabbing other people's guns as they're falling, like, like you know what I mean? Oh, oh it's fire, bro. And he kills a bunch of people, and he, he gets upstairs, and he, he don't, like, and he gets up, and he gets up to the butcher area, right? And he hears, pussy. Hell yeah. Pussy. And this dude starts slicing him. The big dude comes up, he's just slicing him, they get into a big old knife fight. And he's slicing our boy up, and then finally he, he goes to like stab him, and this like little itty bitty knife he has, it gets caught in the barrel of the gun. Like our boy catches it in the gun, and then it breaks off, and then our boy, boom, shoots that like the back end of the knife into mm-hmm. the guy's chest, and then gets up and bah, kicks the rest of the knife like through that nigga. Oh. And then he shot him with a knife. But with a knife, bro. And then he, he goes into the main room and he's like, Sloan! Sloan! And then everyone got, comes out and they surround him and they got their guns pointed at him, right? And you see Fox is one of the people surrounding him. She has her gun pointed out, common, you know. Ooh. And he goes, he looks at them all and he goes, my father wasn't a traitor. And he holds up the little note and he's all fucked up. He's like, this is a kill order. Sloan's name's on it. All right, what you say to me, you know, he goes, uh, he goes it doesn't matter what you do to me. Because I don't want this person. I don't, he's like, it's not me who wants Sloan dead. Fate does. And he throws the note down. And then you hear from up top, fate wanted you dead. No, no, no. Sloan, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
James McAvoy goes, fate wanted you dead, Sloan. You see Sloan up top. And he goes, and you couldn't take it. So you manuf- manufactured targets for your own game. And my dad found out. So you went against him, your own brother. And you sent a man's son to kill his own father. You're not a fucking guy who's, can, you're not a prophet or some <laughs> apostle who can read the future. You're just a thug who bends bullets. And then our boy goes to shoot him. And then right then, Angelina Jolie shoots him in the arm and he drops the gun, right? And then Sloan looks up, and she goes, Fox, is all that true? Did your name come up? And he goes, here's the truth. And he comes downstairs, and he walks up to Sloan, I mean, to, uh, to Fox, Angelina Jolie, and he gives her a little code. He goes, your name came up. And then he goes up to Common. Your name came up, gives him one. And then everybody goes, your name, your name, all of you. He goes around the whole room. He has one for everybody. He goes, all your names came up, every single one of you. If I had not done what I've done, you'd all be dead. I saved your lives. Now look where we are. Stronger than ever. Changing history as we see it. Choosing the targets we select to redistribute power as we see fit. The wolves rule, not the sheep. Now if you need to follow the code to the letter, I invite you to put your gun in your mouth and pull the trigger. That's what Wesley demands. But if you don't agree, then shoot this motherfucker. Ooh. He says motherfucker, which is crazy. That's weird. That's hard to imagine. It's, it's the, bro, <laughs> I remember weird. the thing I saw in theaters. The theater went crazy. <laughs> bro, yeah. it was like awesome Captain America, Marvel, like, like, like Infinity War when, when Captain America grabbed the hammer. Yeah, like, yeah. nigga, like do, a theater, when he said shoot this motherfucker, <laughs> I remember. Oh! <laughs> he said it. <laughs> bro, and he goes, and let's take this fraternity to heights reserved for the gods of men. You choose. And you see him walk out. Sloan leaves. And Wesley's standing alone in the circle, right? And everybody looks around, and Angelina Jolie's looking. And then Common goes, fuck the code. And he cocks his gun, and he's about to shoot. And you see Wesley, he's looking at Angelina Jolie like he can't believe it. And she smiles. And then she, boom, she shoots in it like this way. And the bullet shoots, hits Common, and in slow motion hits the other guy. They're in a circle. Hits the other guy, hits the other guy, and then she tosses her gun to Wesley, and he catches it, hits the other guy, and then the bullet car starts coming to her, and then he catches, and he looks back at her, and he's like, oh, and then she's like, like she just kind of like smiles like really big, and then, she damn, dies. fire, nigga, that's tight, fire, lives by the code, she and she Re- was about that life, she yo, she said yo, if your name comes up, respect the thread. You got to go. Mm-hmm. So our boy goes chasing Sloan, right? He's like, Sloan. He goes downstairs, Sloan. Damn. Can't find him. He's gone. Mm-hmm. Fade to black. You hear narrator. You hear James McAvoy. He goes, six weeks ago, I was ordinary, pathetic, just like you. But who am I now? An account manager again. Assassin. <laughs> you see our boy like. You see the camera like going through the city, and you see our boy like back in his office, and now I'm just another tool, you know, who is mind fucked into killing his own father. I'm all these things, and none of these things. You see our boy like go, he's at an ATM trying to get money out, no money. He falls, he's bloody, he's in pain, and he's like, who am I now? Right? Fade to black. Comes back. He's back in all. You see, like the he's like the back of his head. He's in an office. He goes, "This isn't me fulfilling my destiny or following in my father's footsteps. This is a definitely not me saving the world. This is just." And you hear a gun cock, and it's the back of his head. And you hear still trying to figure out who you are, Wesley. And you hear, "This is not me." And the chair turns, and it's someone else. Mm-hmm. This is just a motherfucking decoy. And Sloan looks down, and he's standing on an X. And he's like, oh, motherfucker. And a bullet, slow motion, goes through his fucking head. And then the bullet stops, and then it rewinds. This is me taking control from my fucking life. Like, this is me taking control of my life from the fraternity, you know, from the office, from Janice, from Billing Report. And you see the bullet going back. <laughs> and it's, like, gaining all the pieces. And it goes through, like, Janice's fucking, like, donut. It goes through, like, his old apartment. It goes uh, through, like, uh, Barry and his, like, uh, his Chris Pratt's coffee. Like, mm-hmm. it goes through all this different shit, right? This is me taking back my life. And, uh, you, see, it, you see it goes all the way. The bullet goes all the way back into, you know, his dad, that, that house. 
right, into the gun. And you see him there, and he smiles, and he looks at the camera, and he goes, what the fuck have you done lately? Wanted. Wow. <laughs> Made it real personal at the end. Made it real. Yo, the end got crazy not about the movie anymore. Kind of, yeah. That line is like, I was just another, I'm just another pathetic loser like you. And it's like, Jesus. <laughs> and then he goes, but, but guess what? I'm not a pathetic <laughs> loser. You are. You, so what are you going to do about it? You Fuck you. You cuck. I have a gun. I can kill people now. <laughs> <laughs> Credits roll. That's wild. What a. Wanted. What a crazy! That's a very weird ending. I did not see crazy that. Crazy ending. I, I thought I expected more of a peaceful life for him. He's like, nah, I fucking murder. Him. <laughs> I, <don't care." laughs> I learned nothing about anything. Kind of, because the beginning of the movie, like that first half, is like, yeah, he's like, oh, I'm very self conscious. I have this, like, I'm I'm depressed. Well, you know what's gonna help me? Killing people <laughs> <laughs> with my friends. <laughs> like, a, just a life of violence, and then it's like, oh, he learns he's corrupt. Oh, it's like not the way to go. Yeah, it's not the way to go. Then he's like, but no, it is for me. <laughs> his, da- his dad wanted him to not live that way. Like, yeah, it's, yeah every, he- it's crazy how much he he learned absolutely nothing, and then to look, have the audacity to look at the camera and go, "What the fuck are you gonna do about it, you bitch made nigga?" Wow, like. What a weird. What's the moral? <laughs> like, what's the, I think the moral. Of this and this is crazy, but I do genuinely believe the moral of this movie is that it's just good. Yeah, I mean, it is good. I was like enthralled. It's no, it's good. Just from you telling the, it. the first time you see it, it's a good. Well, thank you. And the first time you see it, I'm, I genuinely, bro, this is a good ass movie. Yeah, I definitely. This, see this it. was a big hit, like for a reason, because it was like, oh damn, and we see the action, it's like, damn, it's fire. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It was a comic book too, right? Possibly, it has I, to I be, think right? it was. It was. Yeah, I think it definitely was. Uh, who, who, uh, what was your favorite character of the movie? Probably uh, Fox. Angelina yeah, Angelina Jolie. Jolie. Angelina, that, that she was, doesn't was, talk much, which I always like in any character, yeah, especially when it, it's women. Also, facts. But, yeah. Stupid <laughs> bitches. <laughs> bah, 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 bah. Stupid <laughs> bitches. <laughs> Is that the new theme? <laughs> the well, that's, no, it's always been the theme of the <laughs> show. <laughs> But because uh, I think cause how she took her own life at the end, she was like, yeah. "I gotta live by this. Like, I gotta die by it." Too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, made the ending dope. Uh, because I remember, you, you know, mm-hmm. you just don't expect uh the main character to die that way, like by suicide bullet. Yeah. You so, know? Especially when the main character, like, her, it's Angelina Jolie. Yeah, yeah. yeah a- in like, that era, she's like, it, she's leading all movies. She's she was like, the draw of that movie. She, sure, sure. Like, she, I remember when the the trailer came out. Like, you knew James McAvoy was the main guy, and you knew Morgan Freeman was in it. But she, yeah. like, she was the like, oh, Angelina Jolie is in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's funny how him, how McAvoy and Chris Pratt became movie stars after that. Years, right? like, like ten years later, became love movie stars. Yeah, Chris Pratt's like the most famous person out of the whole damn thing he's, now. Probably. He's Mario. He's Mario now. He's fucking Mario. That shit looks good too. I'm excited to see it. Actually, I'm genuinely excited. And I'm excited to see Guardians Three. You see that trailer? That looks cool too. That uh, Ant Man Three and Guardians Three both look good. I have high expectations. Also, man, if those movies miss, who? Jesus Christ, Marvel. You are fucked. I get you're. Still, they're still gonna make money. You no, know, no, no. But I mean, like, uh, no. But they're gonna lose a huge. Uh, you, they're, they're gonna lose. They're gonna lose the people like me and like a lot of people who go and see everything Marvel, no matter what. Yeah. If you keep giving me bad movies, eventually it'll be like how I feel about DC. Certain DC, DC things. I'm like, oh, I don't have to see that. No, no. Does that make sense? That's oh, why you definitely. can't give out too many bad movies, or else, bro, then you're gonna mm-hmm. then it, when when the ratio is like, oh my god, it's impressive when you have a good one. That's not good. Like you, where it was. Marvel, they got to a point where it was like, oh, it was crazy when they had a bad one. Right. And then the bad ones were like kind of decent. Kind of decent. So yeah. it's like for you can't go the other way around where you're like, oh, wow, it's impressive that they have a good one, which is what they've been doing lately. Mm-hmm. They've been kind of all bad. And then like when they have a good one, you're like, oh, oh, oh Spider-Man No Way Home. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, good. Yeah. You know, uh, like, finally. Yeah, yeah. Something that hits like that. So, uh, you know, hopefully they, they they need, I think, for sure, Ant-Man 3 to hit like that. Oh, they definitely do. Yeah. Expectations are high, especially. I still haven't seen Black Panther. Two, yeah, two. This fucking sucks. I know. I haven't seen it. I hate it. I have. I have not missed a Marvel movie in theaters. Uh, the only one was Eternals. You didn't see that one? I finally saw it on Disney Plus. It was good. You know what's funny? Uh, it's not. I, I actually thought Eternals. It's it's clearly not that good, but I I do like it better than Black Panther two, and I like it better than a lot of the mm-hmm. other bad Marvel movies. Eternals was like it was like kind of different and like kind of different. They just you know they they, they it, it wasn't great, but it was it was all right. It was like Thor: Love and Thunder to me. It was like ah, it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's whatever. But I, I get people are like, oh, it's not mind blowing, especially for like a first movie because usually the first movies aren't that like spectacular. Yeah, they're just solid. That's true. They're just like okay, they're fine. Except for Spider Man, the first Spider Man movie was, was tight. First Spider Man movie is unreal good. That might be my favorite one out of the three, honestly. Wait, you want Homecoming or are you talking about the actual Spider Man? Homecoming, yeah. Oh, I thought Homecoming was okay, honestly. 
I liked Homecoming. I yeah. like uh, I like Far From Home better than Homecoming. And then I've, obviously No Way Home is one of the better movies they've I ever made. I like Far From Home. It was too much of the, the well, friends. I like Far From Home. Mysterio is so good in Myst- that. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's fucking Gyllenhaal. Of course it's going to be great. <laughs> he killed it, yeah. But like, there's like too much of his friends. Like, I don't want to care. I don't care about the friends and the, and the classmates. Interesting. I, I genuinely I like Far From Home. And then uh, the fight scenes in it were so good. Where he's fighting like the illusions. Yeah. Love that. That was dope. That was dope. But too much friends. Too many. Too much Ned and the, and the other people. Spider-Man No Way Home, did you like that? I liked parts of it. Whoa. I you did not like a lot of it. You don't consider that like a top three Marvel movie ever made? No, not really. Why? No. You know what's funny? But I would say you're in the minority on that one. I think I am. Yeah, definitely. But when all three Spider-Man are together is probably some of the best moments out of all the MCU. Because that shit was like yeah. genuinely funny. It was yeah. genuinely hilarious. I don't give it. I, I, I can't give it better than uh, moments from Infinity War and Endgame, but yes. But mm-hmm. the moments from Infinity War and Endgame have been built up from 30. It was huge. That was different. So that's not, yeah, like Thor picking, I mean, uh, Captain America picking up the hammer and mm-hmm. like, and, you know, uh, the the Thanos beating up Hulk in the opening scene. Mm-hmm. And like the orig- that first fight scene in the beginning yeah. of the movie with, with Doctor Strange and Iron Man and mm-hmm. Spider-Man comes out of nowhere swinging. Like yeah. that whole shit. Like oh, those great. those moments are, are like untouchable. They're finally right? meeting and just, yeah. It, it actually felt like, oh, this feels like I'm comic book. I'm yeah. actually watching a live comic book. Holy fucking shit. Like they, they, this is it. This is perfect. Yeah, this is what we wanted. Yeah, yeah. Those, but, those were perfect. But like having all the Spider-Man meet and then like joking and having like the meta stuff about it, that could easily be horrible. It like could easily be like so. Could have been bad. Could have been really they bad. They absolutely and they pulled it off. They 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 nailed it. They they, they nailed it. They, it was, and that was like really fun. That was the best parts yeah. of the movie for me. Yeah, they fucked. And William Defoe. It was cool seeing him. Well, again. William Defoe murdered that, bro. Yeah. He was so good. It's I mean, the Green Goblin though. It's Defoe. And, and, and it's also Green, Goblin. Green Goblin's dope. Yeah, Green Goblin already is dope. Yeah, one of the best. And he got to just do that again. And yeah. Doc Ock's in it, which is awesome. And fucking all the other villains were great. Mm-hmm. Jamie Foxx was great. Jamie Foxx killed it. He he was like funny. Yeah, he gave he really gave the villains some like relief, comedic relief. Yeah. But the opening fight scene of just him and Doc Ock on the bridge, I just remember the being like, yo, this movie cool. is amazing. And mm-hmm. just him start the movie starting with the swinging Daredevil. Like, bro, it, nothing Damn. in the movie. The movie just hit start to finish. Spider-Man mm-hmm. No So it's interesting that you don't feel that way. But I'm yeah. curious to what you're going to see. think about Black Panther 2, my friend. Yeah, I should, just go, I should just go see it. Big black balls. Mbaku-sized balls. Mm-hmm. Was Namor cool? No, I mean, really some cool. people thought so. I don't give a shit. I, mean, I, it, I, I didn't give a flying fuck about him. Damn, that's a bummer. Because I want to—he's like native or some shit, right? He's like, yeah, he's a, he's a dirty beanbag. That's 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 my people. I love bean, I, nothing wrong with beanbags. We're the best. <laughs> my boy, thanks for coming. Yeah, Yo, you, you, can I have you back on again? Would yeah, you like to come back? I would love this. This is fun. Oh yeah, what do you yeah. think of the podcast? Now that you uh, know <laughs> it what it good. is, I, that's that's what I thought it was. Like you explain a movie. But I didn't explain to you a movie. I just told you what happened. I guess in the you, you you told the story. Yeah, yeah, literally. You did tell the story, and it was it was actually entertaining. You're really good at it. Thank you, brother. I do appreciate it. Yeah, that, it was fun. Yeah, another movie I haven't seen. I'll be down. Yeah, let me know uh, if there's any other big movies you haven't seen, bro. Let me know. I'll bet. Yeah, What's another big movie you haven't seen? What's the biggest movie off the top of your head? Go. Ah, fucking. I don't know. Gone, gone with the wind. I don't know. <laughs> oh, wow, that's a big. That's a big one. That's a. That's, that's literally one of the biggest it's, movies it's ever huge. made. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, B Mafia. Yeah. Thanks for watching. We love you. I love you so much. Jason loves you. He's going to have mm-hmm. sex with all of you. He's going to find out where you live mm-hmm. and he's going to individually fuck all of you. So, because he's the best guest we've ever had. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Later, guys. Bye.